Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand up this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you in this place today. Lord, we're so grateful, so thankful for your presence today, God. Lord, minister to the hearts of the people today. We're hungry for you. Father, we open our hearts to receive from you today. Father, we'll leave here changed because of your presence, because of your glory. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We honor you. God, you're so good and so faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God.
we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. Hallelujah. God, you're so good. Lord, you're so good. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. Well, turn around and greet somebody, and you may be seated today. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning to Midwest Believers Church. We're glad that you're here today. Are you glad to be here today? Amen. Amen. Welcome to those joining us on Facebook Live. Praise God. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. A couple quick announcements. Uh, first of all, if you're a first-time guest here today, we want to say welcome to you. And if you did not stop by the Welcome Center, please do so. It's out in the foyer, the middle area out there. We have a free gift for you. And want to be sure that you get that and know that you are loved and appreciated here. And wanted to make mention, next week we are having what we call a next class. And what this is, this is going to be a lunch immediately following the service for people. If you are newer to the church in the last six months and have not attended one of these, we want to invite you to come. Um, we're gonna, we have a catered lunch for you, and it will be lunch with Pastor Trent and I. And this gives us an opportunity to visit with you, get to know you a little bit, and then we'll share our heart for the church. Why we're here, what we're doing here, what we believe, those kinds of things. And so we would love for you to come, but we need you to sign up as soon as possible. We have um, a sign-up sheet out at the Welcome Center because we have to get the number of people to our caterer so that she knows uh, how many to, to make food for. And so please try to come to this. We want to get to know you and we let you know how you can get involved and connected in the church. That'll be a blessing to you. And then also uh, we have prayer meeting uh, tomorrow night at 7. And then also the Ignite Youth will be meeting um, on Sundays in the coffee shop at 10 a.m. And so uh, youth, students, if you want to come early and kind of hang out with some of your leaders, you can do that in the coffee shop on Sundays. And then also, um, there's a sign-up sheet out at the Welcome Center. The youth will be doing, um, they're calling it Ignite Youth Roundup Bonfire on Saturday, October 15th. And that's going to be at um, Rich and Tracy Griffith's house. And so it's going to be a fun time. They have some good, good fun things planned for them. And so uh, sign up. For that and then also uh, the coffee connect group will be meeting this Wednesday at McDonald's and we do the McDonald's right down here Wednesday at 9 30 and it's just a time of fellowship if you're free and can get there and want to meet some people and just visit and hang out for a little bit uh, you can do that on Wednesday at 9 30 down there and then also wanted to make quick mention um, some of you know who Jessica is um, Jessica Duncan. It was Jessica Adams, but she's buried now, and uh, she is Duncan now. And she wanted me to take a minute to thank you. She had to have her thyroid removed, and she had surgery, and there were some people that went together and got some gift cards and different things for her uh, for meals, and they have been so blessed by that. And she wanted me to take a minute to say thank you. She's still recovering uh, from surgery, but she's really been ministered to and encouraged so thank you for doing that and I love uh, you know Rena we had her speak a couple weeks ago at first service and many of you know we did meals for her for a few weeks she had a major surgery had part of her lung removed and she's doing well she had to go to Peru to see her mother who was ill and in the hospital um, but something she said so encouraged me that with our church family, you know, all, most of her family is in Peru besides her husband and son, which I see them here today. But she said for the first time in her life, she really experienced the love of Jesus through our church family. And she was so blessed and so encouraged. And that blessed my heart so much because she said, you all are family. And that really ministered to her. And that's a blessing to me. That's what the church is all about. And so to just, 
rally around people when they're going through something and ministering to them. And so praise God for that. And so please continue to pray for her, for Jessica. Um, it's cool to see what God's doing in people's lives. Amen. Praise God. You ready to give today? Amen. Amen. He's so good. If you need an offering envelope, slip your hand up in the air and the ushers will get that for you. You know, I just wanted to take a second to um, say thank you to you all for everybody that came out, watched online for the services last week. And But I was just kind of um, a little bit overwhelmed during during the service just thinking about the ministers there were several ministers here last week and the ministers that we get to do ministry with and uh, different pastors that had come to the meetings and then but I was also thinking about our church family and so I just wanted to tell you this morning how blessed we are to have you as a church family and just like what Rhonda said was talking about with uh with Rena and with Jessica. Just, we are blessed. Uh, we can see your hearts, and, and we are so thankful. It, remember the gas card outreach. Every, everybody was so excited about that and excited about what God was, you know, what God was doing, and just your hearts to, to be a blessing to people around you, to the church, and I just wanted to say just thank you, just a huge thank you. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much, and we're so blessed. Amen. 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 Let's pray over this offering. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give, to sow into the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, that the needs of the church are met abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. And I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, you are, we, we bring our offering and our tithes to you in honor to you. Lord, we understand that all good things come from you. So, Lord, even our jobs, and uh, uh, we thank you that they come from you, that they're a blessing from you. We thank you that you are our source, you are our supply, and we give you thanks and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kids, you're going to be dismissed to go on back to kids' class this morning. After the offering buckets are uh, passed, please stand with us. We're going to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory.
just worship you. Lord, you're great. <clears throat> you are great. We worship you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There's no one like you, Lord. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give him praise. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. You are great. We you. We honor your name. You're so good. So Hallelujah, Jesus. You're so good. Hallelujah, You're so good. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. You know, right now, if you have sickness in your body, Thank you, Lord. I just want you to slip up your hand right now, and we're going to gather around you. Thank Hallelujah. You. If you have sickness, pain in your body right now, just slip up your hand. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I didn't see you. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out this way. Father, we thank you for the healing power of God. Touching Jennifer's body right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We thank you, Lord, that the healing power of God is working in her body right now. In Jesus' name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one You're our healer. You're our life giver. Our strength giver. Our help. You're so great. Oh, there's no one like you. There is no one else like you. Oh, we thank you. There is no one. No one else like you. There is no one else like you. Thank you, Lord, that you're our healer. Thank you, Lord, that you are our strengthener. You are our helper. Nobody like you, Jesus. No one like you. None like you. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise.
give you praise. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, there's no one like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll turn to somebody and say, there's no one like him. Amen. And you can be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Amen. He's so good. So faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Verse 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys go ahead and turn on those lights in the back there if you want. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say he's good. He's good. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. You remember we started talking several weeks ago about renewing the mind. And about thinking like God. And so I just wanted to come back to that. How many of you enjoyed Pastor Mark and Rhonda? Oh, man. Such a blessing. I would, I would encourage you, those of you who weren't able to be here, and those of you who were able to be in even all the services, um, go back to the, go on the website. They're a little bit out of order as far as, so you'll have to look and see which one's a.m. and which one's p.m. But, uh. All the services are on the website, and um, you will be blessed by that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, we had pastors Mark and Rhonda come in to do that prayer conference, uh, not for no reason, but because the Lord had led us to do that, and uh, because I believe he wants us to take us to another level in prayer. Amen. Amen. And not just a few. Somebody say, not a few, not a few. but all of us. Yes. Amen. Because yes. our prayer lives will determine the lives that we live. Yes. Amen. It's, it's important. And it's not, it's not something uh, that is just okay or it's good to do or it's religious to do. No, it's how we communicate with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that wasn't man's idea. And you know, prayer wasn't God, or man's idea. But prayer was God's idea. Right. Amen. Amen. How, how are these people that we created uh, going to communicate with us through prayer? Amen. Amen. And so we talked to God through prayer. And so, uh, but, but I had on my heart just to, just to come back to this. Uh, and, and we may finish up here. I, I, I'm not sure. Hallelujah. But uh, turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. You're probably already there. But it says out of the NIV, it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, uh, you know, we, we had said this, that we're not to be conformed to the pressures of the world. Uh, we are not to conform to just the pressures of the world, the way the world thinks, the way the world talks, the way the world acts. But we're to be transformed. So we're not to be moved by outside pressure, but we're to be transformed and we're uh, to be moved by inward leading. Yes. That's how the Holy Ghost leads us by uh, on the inside, not by the pressures from the outside. How many of you know there's a lot of pressure right now? Yes. Man, there are some things that I just wouldn't even wouldn't even want to get into a conversation with somebody because there's so much pressure to think like the world thinks, to talk like the world talks, to, to act like the world acts. There's so much pressure, but we aren't moved by that. Right. We're children of God. Yes. We're not children of the world. We don't act like the world. We don't do things like the world does because God has given us grace and we've been translated. Philippians says we've been translated into a new kingdom. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so we've been taken out of the world 
and we've been translated into a new kingdom. So we act like God talks to us, you know, like God speaks to us, Dad, like, like the word tells us. And so we're not just conformed by everything, all the pressures of the world, but we're transformed uh, <coughs> by the renewing of our mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Amen. It says this, do not be conformed to this world, the Amplified says, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Um, the Message Bible says this, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. You know, we can just fit in and just do things the way the world does without even thinking about it. All you have to do for that is absolutely nothing. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to, nothing special. But God said, don't be conformed to this world. Don't fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. Hallelujah. Somebody says, well, you don't look any different, but I'm different on the inside. Amen. Something's happening on the inside. Many times we look for people to change on the outside, but God does a work on the inside. If you want God's work, you're not going to want them to uh, change. On, you're not going to be looking for the outside change. You're going to look for the inside change. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And so God works. God works in our lives and through us. Amen. And so we begin to talk uh, last, not, not last week, but the week before last, we begin to talk about how do we renew our minds? How do we do this? How do we do this thing? Um, number one, we stop thoughts immediately. We are aware of our thinking. We understand that what we think about affects our lives. Yes. Some, sometimes people say, say, well, I don't know that the, what I think about doesn't affect my life. It doesn't. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The way we think, and even to the simplest thing, the way we think about other people. Anybody ever thought somebody else thought something about you? The way I think other people think about me affects how I respond to them. So don't, don't tell me. I know from personal experience that the way I think affects my life. Amen. And God said, don't, be, don't think the thoughts of the world. Don't, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we stop thoughts immediately. Stop thoughts immediately. Well, that's going to take some effort on my part. Yes. Yes, it's going to take some effort on, my, on, on our parts. If we want to renew our minds, if we really think, you know, what we think about is really important. Amen. Amen. And, and so we stop thoughts immediately. It takes effort. It takes work. But you know, anything worth, worth uh, having yeah. takes work. Amen. 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 I mean, you know, marriage, those of you that are married, it takes work, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, forgiving, walking in love, it takes work. It takes effort. It's not just like God just plops on you a uh, love Something so that you can walk in love and you just walk around and you just think, man, I'm just on a cloud. This is, this is amazing. God, you're amazing. Well, he is amazing, but uh, love takes an effort. You know, I have to put, if I'm going to walk in love, I have to put desires, my own desires down. Amen. Amen. There are times that there are some things that maybe I want to say, but because I'm going to walk in love, I don't say them. That's right. That's you know, it's a lot harder to not say something that you feel like saying than it is to just go ahead and say it. Absolutely. It takes more strength. So, you know, uh, somebody said uh, being a Christian is a weak man's crutch. No, no, it's a strong man's everything. Yes. Amen. Amen. Being a Christian, it takes a lot more strength to hold back and to walk in love when you feel like just saying yes. whatever, you know. So, so it takes some effort, but the Lord says that we can renew our minds. And so number one, stop thoughts immediately. 
Uh, the scripture for that is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Uh, I'm not going to go to it, but you can read it. Uh, <coughs> number two, replace those thoughts with God's words. Amen. So it's important that we find out what God says about us. Find out what the Bible says about us. We can't just, just show up at church, but we have to find out what the Word of God says about us. You know, because on Monday... When, when we don't necessarily have a church service. But on Monday, the enemy is going to attack. Amen. And the thoughts are going to come that you can't make it, that you can't do it. So I'm going to have to find out from God's word what his word says. And I'm going to uh, have to begin to declare those things over my life. Amen. Amen. Uh, one minister said this, when the enemy points to everything that I'm not, I point to everything that God is. Right. Amen. The enemy says, well, you're not this, you're not that. But he's that. Yes. He is. He is. Yes. Amen. And so we enjoy the success that Jesus had because Jesus went to the cross for us. And we enjoy that success because he's so good and so merciful. Amen. 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 Uh, <clears throat> Psalm 19 verse 14 says this. These are the words in my mouth. You know, his words are to be in our mouth. Amen. In our mouth. And this script, the message Bible says, these are what I chew on. Amen. And you say, what? What? Chew on? These are what I chew on. Well, you know, um, this is, well, I started to talk about a, chow, a cow chewing its cud. But anyway, that's kind of gross. But anyway, these are, if I meditate on it, if I think about it over and over, that word meditate is to just to, to mutter, or you can say it this way, to roll over in your mind. Anybody ever thought about a situation and you thought about it over and over and over again? Well, that's what this, that's what this in the Message Bible is talking about. These are what I chew on. So instead of thinking about being angry at somebody or being upset with somebody, instead of chewing on that, chew on the Word of God. Chew on the fact that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. That he has made you more than a conqueror through him. Amen. Chew on those things. Chew on those, those things that talk about you're the healed of the Lord. Begin to chew on and begin to think about that over and over. Amen. Begin to think about how, how he is your victory. He's my victory. He's my victory. Lord, I just, I just, I'm going to think about that for a little bit. Wouldn't that be a whole lot better than getting mad and getting angry at everybody else? Amen. <clears throat> and so we replace them, uh, place those, replace those thoughts with God's words. Uh, number three, recharge your spiritual batteries. Amen. How many of you know, you don't just go, uh, you don't just go on a trip and never stop at the gas station. Rhonda just came back from Tulsa uh, yesterday. And she stopped. She filled up with gas before she left. But you know she had to stop again to fill up again. And I said this in first service. Wouldn't it have been silly if there were five people in the car. And if all five would have been crying and upset. And a police officer came and they were stopped on the side of the road. And he says, what's wrong? Oh, we're just out of gas. And he's like, there's a gas station right here. There's a gas station right here. What you need to do is refill. Well, we understand that that's a normal thing in the natural. But spiritually, we have to refill. We have to recharge our batteries. We have to recharge our batteries. And in one way that the Bible talks about that, and Pastor Mark talked about this uh, quite a bit, but praying in your prayer language. Yes. The Bible says in Jude verse 20 says, But beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you build yourself up. Yes. Amen. Amen. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you build yourself up and strengthen yourself. Amen. And number four... <clears throat> is remember. Somebody say remember. remember. Remember what God has done for you. 
Remember what God has done in someone else. Remember the things how God has brought you out. Remember how God has brought you out and how he has uh, made a way where there seemed like there was no way. Yes. Anybody ever looked at a situation like there is no way? Yeah. There is no way. There is no way I, I, I think about this. Anybody ever thought about a situation over and over? Yeah. And no matter what way you thought about it, it didn't come out good for you. Yeah. Well, the Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way. And think about that and remember what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. People who have forgotten what God has done, people who have forgotten the benefits of being in Christ, tend to slip back into mediocrity and self-destructive tendencies. So good. People that have forgotten tend to slip back. Remember the children of Israel, you can look at it over in Psalm 78. Talks about how the children of Israel, they limited God because they forgot. They had forgotten how he brought them out. They had forgotten what he had done in their lives. And they limited God. You say, well, I don't, I don't think we can limit God. Oh, yeah, we can limit God. We can limit God by our thinking. We can limit God by our talking. You know, sometimes people say, well, God did this. God did this. God put this on me. God didn't put sickness on you. No, God didn't put sickness on you. Remember how the Lord uh, said in his word over in Isaiah chapter 53, he said, surely I have borne your griefs and carried your sorrows by whose stripes you were healed. Hey, Amen. He's, he's given us all kinds of uh, different ministries and different things to teach us things. He's given us a prophet, prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists. He's given us his word. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He doesn't need sickness to teach you anything. Exactly. Amen. And so we understand that, but we have to uh, renew our minds to that. When the devil says no, God says yes. Amen. When the devil says you can't, God says you can. Amen. If we'll trust him, he, uh, 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 he causes us to be able to do things that we couldn't do in the natural. Amen. 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 I want to talk just for a second about families and about, about children and about your testimony. Amen. Did you know that your testimony is the answer for someone else? Did you know that your testimony, what God has done in your life, what God has done for you, we can't forget those things. Amen. And we need to not only just remember them here, but we need to remember them here. In other words, our kids need to hear what God has done yes. for us and through us. Amen. Um, our daughter was just, she was sharing with somebody how uh, a friend of hers, how uh, I was healed of cancer. And she was telling, and he goes, you mean that God healed him of cancer? Yeah, God healed my dad of cancer. And he said, well, Addie, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. And he said, you mean that I don't, he has some stomach issues. And he said, he said, you mean God will heal me? Of stomach issues? And she said, yeah. You know, your testimony could be the answer to someone else. Maybe they weren't there when you were healed, but they need to hear about it. Maybe they weren't there when God brought you out, but they need to hear about it. Your testimony, your words, and your remembrances of what God has done for you. It'll be an encouragement to you, but it'll be an encouragement to someone else. Yeah. Amen. And the light bulb came on for Addie's friend. The light bulb came on. And all of a sudden, he was like, you mean I can be healed? Yeah, you can be healed. Praise God. Amen. And so your testimony will not only stir your faith, but it'll stir the faith of someone that is with you. Amen. Amen. It'll stir the faith of your family. 
You know, my kids can hear about that. They'll say, and you know, one day they'll say, the God, Lord, I thank you that you healed daddy. I thank you that you healed daddy. But now I'm dealing with this in my own body, and I thank you that I'm healed. I'm the healed of the Lord. And the same God that healed my daddy is my God. And the same God that healed him heals me. Amen. Amen. And so your words, your testimony could be the step of what someone needs for their healing. Could be, could be exactly what they need to hear for their salvation. Amen. There are people that have been depressed and discouraged and feel like there is no hope. You know what you are carrying within you? Hope. Amen. <laughs> you're not a dope dealer. You're a hope dealer. Amen. And you're dealing in hope. What are you dealing in? I'm dealing in hope. Amen. I'm dealing in joy. I'm dealing in peace. But for those, for us to walk in those things and be that blessing to those people that are around us, man, we've got to think right. That's right. Yeah. We've got to talk right. Yeah. And so what, what floats through this brain, uh, what floats through this mind, we have to, the Bible says, take it captive. Yeah. In other words, we have to be aware of those things. And when we know that that's not of God, we resist it. Amen. Amen. And when we know it's of God, we receive it. Amen. Our kids have to know. Amen. Um, they haven't seen, but you have. Amen. <coughs> somebody, somebody says this, well, you never know what God's going to do. Uh, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Yeah. And they say you never know what God's going to do. You know what God's going to do because you see it in the word of God. Right. Amen. Uh, there's a scripture that says, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard. In the next verse, it says this, but it's been revealed to you. Amen. Amen. You know, there are people out there that don't know that Jesus is the Savior, but it's been revealed to you. Yes. There's people out there that don't know. There's people... Uh, in churches all over this town that don't know that Jesus is their healer, but it's been revealed to you. Amen. There are people that don't know the goodness of God, but the goodness of God has been revealed to you. Amen. Amen. So don't be afraid to share that goodness with others. Don't be afraid to share the goodness of God with the people that are around you because people need to hear your testimony. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, I grabbed some scriptures. I want to talk about some scriptures that we think like he thinks. Amen. We don't just think, well, this is the way I've always been taught for years. And it may be good and it may not. But don't just think God's word, uh, that God is a certain way because you've always been taught that way. Find it in the word of God. See what God says about you. Amen? Amen. And so uh, I want to look at this. Um, actually, Psalm chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. I love this scripture. But it says, I love you, Lord, my strength. Somebody say, he's my strength. He's my strength. See, I, I can't think he's a weak God, and I can't think that he wants weakness for me, because God's word says here, he's my strength. He's my strength. Uh, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. Somebody say my rock. My, rock. my fortress. My deliverer. My God is my rock. <coughs> you know, I've heard people say that about so-and-so is my rock. So-and-so. Man, they're, they're a rock, man. What do they mean by that? They're steady. They can be depended on. Amen. But God is steady and he can be depended on. Amen. Not moving, not changing. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He is my rock. <clears throat> he is my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold. He is my stronghold. He is my, I'm going to break that word down just for a second. He is my strong hold. That means when I don't feel steady, he's steady. Yes. When I don't feel like, 
Oh, man, I don't know how I can deal with it. He's my stronghold. He's holding me strong. Yeah. Amen. He's holding me strong. You know, when you were a little kid, you went to your mommy or your daddy, and you went to their arms, and they held you, and everything was just okay then. We told stories about the little girl, about the little girls, about Addie and Anna coming in during a storm, and they'd run into our bed, and they'd fall asleep, and that was great, except there was no more room for me, so I would go to the couch, uh, generally, but they just fell asleep. Why? Because everything's okay in mom and dad's bed. Everything's all right in mom and dad's. Well, I just want to tell you something. Don't lean on your own strength. Amen. Lean on him. Amen. He is, if we'll lean on him, he is our strong hold. Yes. Amen. He's our strong hold. Somebody say that with me. Say, he's my strong, my strong hold. hold. Amen. He's my strong hold. And we can trust him and we can depend on him. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says this. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. He says I will strengthen you. I will help you. Now if I'm depending on my own self... I run out of strength, but he never runs out of strength, so I'm going to depend on him. I'm going to keep my eyes on him because he is my stronghold. And he'll help me and strengthen me, and he will hold me up. Well, pastor, I was going through this thing, and it just seemed like, man, I just had strength. I don't know where that was from, but I'll tell you what, it was from the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. And when you feel like you can't stand, he'll hold you up. Yes. When you feel like there's no way, he'll hold you up. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's your stronghold. I, I'm having trouble getting away from that. He's your stronghold. Yes. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Because you feel like, you feel like there, uh, there's probably not a, there's probably, there's not a way. For me, but he is your way. Yes. He's a strong hold. Yes. He is your strong hold. Pastor, you've said that like a bunch of times. But it doesn't matter. He's still your strong hold. Amen. Yes. Amen. When you leave out of here and you're not in church where people are praising and worshiping God and and you know, the band's up there playing, and thanks for jumping in there, Chad. And the band's up there playing, and, uh, you know, everything's, everything's great. Well, I just love being here. I just love being here. Well, you know what? Monday's coming, and Tuesday's coming. And you know what? We have to have a strong home. Yes. So our strength doesn't come from just the praise and worship, and thank God for the praise and worship, and thank God for being together in church. But on Tuesday, we're not. And we have to have a stronghold. So we better be tapping into the strength and say, Lord, you're my stronghold. Yeah. You're my stronghold. Amen. You're holding me up. You're holding me up. Amen. So I'm thinking about him the right way. I'm thinking about him. My mind is fixed on him. He is faithful if I'll trust him. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear. Uh, the Amplified Bible says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice. God didn't make you a coward. Amen. Of craving and cringing and fawning fear. But he has given unto you a spirit of power and of love and of a calm, well-balanced mind. Well, I'm just always so amped up. He's given to you a calm and well-balanced mind. Yes. Well, Pastor, I've lived in fear of, the, of a certain thing for years. He has not given to you a spirit of fear. Right. That didn't come from God. Resist that fear and receive that calm, well-balanced mind. Amen. Well, anxiety, I've just been dealing with anxious thoughts. Anxious thoughts, he's given you a calm, 
and well-balanced mind. I thank you, Lord, that I have a calm and well-balanced mind. Because, not, because, uh, not because I'm seeing it on the outside, but because your word says it and I receive it. So I'm not conforming to the things of this world, but I'm being transformed by the renewing of, of my mind. Amen. Amen. I'm changing the way I think uh, from a spirit of fear to a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. And you may feel like, you may feel like I'm in a deep, sunless valley. And it feels like death all around me. There is no light, no hope, no way. He says, David said this, I will fear no evil. Even when everything around me looks bad, I'll fear no evil. Amen. For you're with me. Oh, I love that. For you are with me. I've told you the story several times. I don't have a lot of stories, and so I just tell the same ones over and over. But um, when, when we first started going to the, to the prison, and we went to Robinson Correctional Center, and it was fine when the first couple doors locked behind me, but when the third door locked behind me, and we were out in that, what do they call that thing? Like courtyard or something, but when we were out in the middle of all the buildings, I thought, oh, brother, here we go. And I read, remember the signs that said, sit down if shots are fired? I thought, we don't have to worry about any sitting down. Uh, it, 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 was, it was not a good situation. And, um, but I'll tell you, I, J.R. went with me. And I'm like, if anybody's going to fight, it's going to be him. I'm a lover, not a fighter. And so... Anyway, I thought, you know, just having somebody with you makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we went in there, and we had a great time. I mean, it was a, just a powerful time. And got to the place that I knew some of the guys. And if JR couldn't go, I didn't mind going by myself because these guys were with me, you know. Yeah. And they were taking. Having someone with you yeah. makes all the difference in the world. Well, I don't want to go by myself. Nobody likes to, even, you know, ladies always go to the restroom in, in groups and pairs. It's like, I don't think guys do that. You'd get a black eye if you did that, you know. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> but having someone with you, there is, there's something about having someone with you. Amen. And he said, I'm with you. I'm with you. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. Amen. So no matter what it looks like on the outside, no matter what it looks like around, uh, he's with you. He's with you. Amen. Uh, here's another scripture. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 says this. You keep him in perfect peace. Somebody say perfect peace. Perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. How do we walk in peace? You know, where we keep our minds determines whether we walk in peace or not. Amen. Amen. Where we keep our minds determines whether we walk in peace or not. So, you know, uh, we, we have to keep our minds on him. How do we do that? Man, take a scripture. Take a scripture. As a matter of fact, you can, um, there's these uh, different scripture cards. I just call them scripture cards, but... Uh, for different things, for peace, for finances, um, for uh, protection, with, uh, healing scriptures, all different kinds of things out there. You can take that and just take one scripture and just think about it. Yeah. Say, this is going to be my scripture for the day. And so I'm thinking about this scripture. Uh, I'm going to roll this around. I'm going to chew on it like, like the, the uh, uh, what was that translation said? What was that translation? I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm going to chew on it. I'm going to meditate on this scripture. What am I doing? I'm keeping my mind on him. Yes, amen. I'm keeping my mind on him. I'm thinking about him. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If I'm thinking about him, it's going to be a lot more difficult for me to get off into a conversation 
that's not godly? Because I've been thinking about him all day. Amen. You know one of these trains that has 50 cars or whatever behind it? It's really hard for that train to stop. It takes several miles for that train to stop. Well, you know, if you're going in a certain direction and you're thinking about God and you're thinking in a certain direction of how good he is and how faithful he is, it's really difficult to stop that train and to turn it around and go a different direction. Amen. So, so what do we do? We begin to think about him first thing in the morning and keep our minds on him all day long. Amen. 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 And he said, if we'll do that, he'll keep us in perfect peace. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. So if I'm not walking in peace, then I can tell this. Where has my mind been? Exactly right. My mind hasn't been on him. Amen. But then I can change it yeah. and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to keep my mind on you. And I'll walk in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Because he says, you'll walk in peace if your mind is stayed on me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if my mind's on him, then I can trust him. Yes. I can trust him. Amen. Let's look at this healing scriptures for just a second here. Psalm 107, verse 20. says this. He spoke the word that healed you, Amen. that pulled you back. This is out of the message translation. He spoke the word that healed you, that pulled you back from the brink of death. Praise God. You say, well, I'm pretty close to death. It's not over. It's not over. Amen. Amen. He spoke the word that healed you and pulled you back from the brink of death. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Then shall your light break forth like the morning. I don't see light break forth. In the morning. I don't see many sun, sunrises. Uh, there's a reason for that. It's because I'm in bed. Where most of you are. But uh, Colton sees a lot of sunrises. And he gets up early. And sees a lot, of, uh, a lot of sunrises. But I'll tell you something. He said. Your light will break forth. Like the morning. And your health. Will spring forth speedily. Quickly. Amen. Amen. So. Oh, I'm just going through this. <coughs> this is probably what, what God wants for me. <coughs> Amen. This is probably what God wants for me. But it's not. Thank you. But it's not what he wants for you. He says your light will break forth like the morning. And your health, your healing, your restoration, the power of a new life shall spring forth speedily. Your restoration... <clears throat> Let me just take a drink before I say that. There are some people in this room this morning that you've been in a certain way for so long. How could it ever be restored? Maybe you've made... Some mistakes, and we've all made mistakes, right? Maybe you've been in some sin, and you say, how could I ever be restored? The Lord said in this scripture that your restoration shall spring forth speedily, quickly, quickly. The Lord's restoring. He's not keeping you from him. He's endeavoring to get you to him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so your health, the King James says, your health shall spring forth speedily, yes. quickly. Does the Lord want you sick or does he want you to stay sick? No, no. As a matter of fact, if we'll trust him, if we'll keep our eyes on him, if we'll begin to agree with his word, our health will spring forth quickly. Hallelujah. Somebody say quickly. quickly. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I love the way this reads in the Amplified Version. It says the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. The only reason that the enemy comes... 
The only reason that those thoughts come is to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. But God didn't come to give you that. Jesus didn't come. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Or the Amplified says that you might have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Amen. He wants you to have more than enough life. His plan for you. And so we have to think along those lines. And we can differentiate between <clears throat> that's not a God thought. That's, that's, a, that's a weakness thought. That's a stealing, killing, destroying thought. I'm not going to think that thought. As a matter of fact, I'm going to change. I'm going to fill my mouth with his words. And my thoughts will follow my words. Amen. 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 So I'm going to fill my mouth with his words. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, you've come that I might have life that I might have it to the full, in abundance, till it overflows. I don't, and, and maybe, maybe you say, I don't even know what that exactly means. But Lord, I'll just take it. Whatever, whatever life is, I'll take it. Yeah. Whatever, whatever joy is, maybe you've never experienced the joy that the Lord gives, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Whatever it is, I'm going to agree with your word. Yeah. You know, God has it, the, your best in mind. Amen. When somebody talks about, uh, uh, about uh, sin, when they begin to talk about, well, you know what? Uh, the Bible talks about, you know what? Uh, don't walk in sin. Don't walk in the flesh. It begins to talk about some of those things. Sometimes people are like, oh, well, God's so hard. No, he has the best in mind for you. Amen. He has the best in mind for you. Amen? Uh, talking about finances. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Remember, these are just some scriptures. Um, to think on. Some scriptures to think on. Because we are renewing our mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says this. And God is able to make all grace come to you in abundance uh, and God is able to make all grace the Amplified says every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always uh, and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid somebody say no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and chari charitable donation. Amen. That's his plan for you. Yes. His plan for you is to have such abundance in your life that you're able to minister to someone else's need. Yes. Amen. You're able to help. You're able to, to give to someone or you're able to help with someone because you have an overflow of abundance. Amen. That, that's God's plan for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's God's plan for you. Amen. <clears throat> and so, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2 says this. There is, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who belong in Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation. Sometimes people are so condemned about their past, so condemned about how they've messed up. But the Lord says, if you're in Christ, there is no condemnation. Amen. He didn't say there's little condemnation. There is no condemnation. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you can walk free from your past. You can walk free from mistakes. You can walk free from failures. And there's no condemnation. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says this. These are in Christ's scriptures. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Always. Somebody say always. always. Minister one time preached a whole message on that one word, always. 
And we looked at all kinds of scriptures. Always, always, always. And, uh, but he always leads us in triumph in Christ. If I'm in Christ, he always leads me in triumph. If I'm in him, if I'm looking to him. So you know what? If I think like he thinks, if I think from his word, if my mind is renewed, I'll always be thinking along the lines of triumph. I'll not be thinking along the lines of defeat because he always causes me to triumph. I don't, I don't understand, but he always causes me to triumph. He always causes me to triumph. Not because I've been so perfect, but because he is. He's perfect, and he has my best in mind. What is best for me, he has in mind, and he always causes me to triumph. Always causes me to be in victory. Always causes me to triumph in Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 says this. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have made it on my own. But this one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind. And straining forward to what lies ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I love this here. He says, I don't count myself to have made it on my own, but this is one thing that I do. And this is one thing that we need to do. Forgetting those things that are behind. Amen. 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 If I'm thinking like him, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. And the devil, the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And when the thought comes, well, you did this, you did this, I don't, I forget. I forget. That's one time that we can say, I forget. I forget. Maybe you shouldn't forget the milk. But maybe, but you should forget the past. Amen. 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 Forget, forget the mistakes, forget the failures. Paul said, this one thing I do. <laughs> this one thing I do. I forget those things which are behind. If I'm going to press toward God, then I am going to have to forget those things that are behind. Amen. Amen. Because so many times I've, I've tried and, and, and I've uh, decided I'm going to press towards God. But as soon as I grab a hold of the past, thoughts of the past, failures of the past, yeah. as soon as I grab hold of that, you can forget me going forward in God. Amen. Because I'm hanging on to the past. I've got to let that go. One minister said this. Bury the past or it'll bury you. Amen. 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 And we can get so overwhelmed by past mistakes. And we just have to let those things go. Amen. Say it's under the blood. It's under the blood. And when the thought comes. and well, you, God's probably mad at you. Amen. Amen. Oh, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Why did he do that? Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Why did he give his only son? Because he loves you. The God kind of love is not dependent on me being perfect. He loves me. Amen. Now I'm endeavoring to change. But his love for me is not dependent on that. You know, sometimes we say, well... I'll love you if you love me. I'll be kind to you if you be kind to me. But if you cross me, don't even cross me. Because I am, I, I had one person that was, uh, he was a customer, ended up being a nice guy. But uh, the first time I met him, I walked up and he says, I am really tough to deal with. And he just all right off the bat said, man, I am. You may want to get somebody that has more experience. And I'm thinking, I probably need to go get somebody that has more experience because they can deal with this guy. But um, ended up dealing with the guy. Ended up everything was good. But you know what? You may feel like I am that guy. But God loves you anyway. That's right. Amen. Amen. Anybody remember uh, crossing the switchblade? Who was that? Nikki Cruz and David Wilkerson. And so somebody flipped out a knife on David Wilkerson. This was in New York City. And they said, I'm going to cut you into a thousand pieces. 
And here's this guy standing there with a knife drawn on him. And he said, every piece will say I love you. And you know what? We can walk in love. We can walk in the goodness of God, but we have to change our thinking. We change our thinking. We think right. Amen. Uh, And we have to uh, remember. Somebody say remember. Remember. Mm. We have to remember. And I I had these, have these, these aren't for sale, so you can get those and we just do them. So, I mean, you're not, you're not out anything if you, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but this card out here says remember. And um, I love these things. I'll go to them. I probably have, and I made these cards, but I probably have several copies of each of these cards because I'm just like, I don't want to look for it. I'll just go get some more. And so I have these cards all over the place. But this one says, remember who you are. Listen to this. Just as we, as we close. You're, you are, talking about you, you're a born again, new creature, blood washed, righteous, holy, sanctified saint of God. You're a greater one indwelt, Jesus' name authorized, clothed with power, overcomer. Amen. Amen. That's who you are. Amen. Amen. Uh, I have on here, remember who the devil is. The devil is a created being, a fallen angel, a stripped, defeated, conquered, made a show of, time is short, under my feet, lesser one. The devil's under your feet. You are victorious if you're in Christ. Amen. So we have to think victory. We have to think, who am I? Oh, he gave his son for me. I must be pretty important. He gave everything for me. He must love me. Yes, he absolutely does. Absolutely does. Listen to this. We remember who God is. God is the creator, the sustainer of all things, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who gives us life, breath, and all things, the giver of every good and perfect gift. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He's all wise, all knowing. The one who loved me and gave himself for me and ever lives to make intercession for me. He calls me the apple of his eye. He's never lied. He's never come short. He's never been late. He's never been weak. He's never forgotten. He is the one who's never failed. Praise God. I want to encourage you to get these and remind yourself of who he is. And remind yourself of what the Bible says about you. Amen. Begin to think about that. Lord, you love me. And you gave yourself for me. I thank you, Lord. And just take some time to think about it. Lord, you have sustained me. You have sustained me in times of trouble, times of hardship. Lord, I've made it through because you've sustained me. You've helped me. You've helped me in my business. You've helped me. You're the sustainer of all things. And as you do that, you begin to think differently. Amen. Because we renew our minds thinking on the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your Word. We thank you that your Word is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light to our pathway. We don't forget the good things that you've done for us. We don't forget what you've done in us. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing through us to other people. Lord, we're being a blessing to other people. We're being a strength to other people. Because you are our strength. We give you thanks. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and eyes closed, if you say this, you say, you know what? I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. You're talking about how good he is. I don't know him. 
I don't know his goodness like that. Well, today you can know his goodness. So if you're on Facebook or if you're in the room, just slip up your hand. You say, I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Either one, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life and I want to pray that prayer with you. Or two, I've made Jesus the Lord of my life, but I've slidden back from him. And uh, I need to renew my fellowship, my relationship with the Lord Jesus. If that's you, I just want you to slip up your hand. If you're in the room or if you're out on Facebook, just go ahead and slip up your hand. I know we can't see you, but God sees you. Amen. And everybody pray this prayer with me. Say this, dear Jesus, come into my life. I thank you for forgiving me of sin. I believe that you went to hell for me. That, Lord, you died on the cross for me. And God raised you back up from the grave. I believe I'm born again right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, whether you raise your hand or not, you prayed that prayer. We believe you've been born again. Amen. Altar care team, go ahead and come on up this morning. Hallelujah. Jared's going to come up and share a few things in just a minute. But, you know, if you, if you need prayer, please do not leave this morning without having prayer. Amen. And uh, you, say, you say, well, I'm saved, but I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. These guys will lead you in being filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, one of the best decisions you've ever made. Amen? Amen. God's good. Amen? Amen. Jericho, come up. Praise God. Amen. Is that awesome? It's the Word of God. It's true. You know, you're here for a reason. This is your church for a reason. But you need to seek God in where you're supposed to be. It's up to us to get in the word. It's up to us to pray. And it's, us, it's, up, it's up to us to do what God's telling us to do. We have to do that. That's our part. We need to draw on the gift that God's given us. But, you know, you need to be on your word daily. And there's a daily word out there that you can pick up. At a minimum, you should be in the Bible daily because that's where you get to know what God has for you. You want to know what the plan of God is for you? Get in the Word of God. Get in the Bible. And God will start speaking to you when you start seeking Him. Seek God. Pray. You should pray individually. You should pray corporately. And, you know, our pastors are so, so genuine. They're I know I'm called here, I'm here to serve here, and I'm to do what I need to do with this church. And in October, what do we celebrate in October? <laughs> yes, it's one of my favorite times of year to celebrate Pastor Appreciation Month. Now, we should be praying for our pastors daily. Tisha and I pray for the pastors daily, we pray for the leadership, we pray for the church. But when God is so good, he just, how we've been talking about renewing our minds, and then we had a prayer conference. It was so timely with Pastor Mark Garver coming here. And if you didn't get a chance to sit in those meetings, you can go to Facebook. Um, I'm not familiar with Facebook, but you can go on Facebook Live and, and see those. But they're on YouTube also. If you go to YouTube, uh, just search Midwest Believers Church, it'll come up. But in those meetings, he was talking about how to pray. So if you need help in that area, which we all need help and need to improve, very, very good. And... During that time, I usually will seek God in, you know, Pastor Appreciation Month. I, for some reason, I feel like it's my responsibility to seek God and say, hey, what are we supposed to do as a church for them? What, you know, for our pastors? What, we, what can we do? Um, and last year, it came to me in February. This year, it came to me two week, a week ago. Um, so I don't know, but it was something that was just so good that this year, I, I want everybody to just spend time, seek God, and we're going to pray for our pastors in the month of October. So the whole month of October, I want everybody to spend, not everybody, I want those that are willing 
to see a change in this church, to see a change in your lives, in your own lives, and see a change in our pastors, I want you to commit to at least 10 minutes a day in praying specifically for our pastors, okay? This doesn't take the place of your individual prayer. It doesn't take the place of what you do daily in the Word. It doesn't take place of anything. This is additional. So if you'll spend the time and just really seek God in this, there's going to be magnificent change in your lives, okay? Now, I can't tell you to do this, but what I'm asking is anybody that is willing to do this, if you're committed to doing it, there's papers out on the Welcome Center, and Tisha has some copies, too. You can see Tisha and grab a copy. And then the whole month of October, get up 10 minutes early, go to bed 10 minutes late. But at least spend 10 minutes praying. And there's specific items in here to pray for for our pastors. And it's a timely thing. There's a reason why we had the prayer conference. There's a reason why pastor always says we have to pray there before we go there. Midwest Believers Church is going somewhere. God has a plan for us. God has a plan for you. But unless we do something on our end, we're just going to be sitting here watching the world go by. And as a wake-up call to me, when I, when I actually, you know, listened to uh, Brother Mark, and I was like, wow, I don't even scratch the surface on what I need to be doing praying-wise. God dealt with me on what I need to be doing. So I'm challenging you for Pastor Appreciation Month to show honor to our pastors and spend some extra time every day for that month praying specifically for them. Okay? And then on the 23rd, we will do uh, a special offering. Seek God in what you're to do, and then do it. That's, that's, it's that simple. God made it simple. Read my word, hear my word, be a doer of my word. It's that simple. Give your heart to God. You know, one thing the pastor was talking about is the harvest out there, the people. They have a special heart for people. They have a heart that's hard when you're in the world, when you work in different professions, you see things in the world. You know, my son's a police officer, and, you know, he sees stuff that I don't see every day. And it can really change your view of people. But I pray that that doesn't change his view of people. I want him to see people the way God sees people. And that's what I, I pr I've changed my prayer. One way I've changed my prayer is that way. I want to see people the way God sees them. I want to love people the way God loves people. Because that's our harvest. And Pastor Mark, what he said, it was so good. He said, when did the harvest become your enemy? And that resonated with me. That's our harvest, the people out there that don't know God, the people that aren't serving God. That's our harvest. When did they become the enemy? I don't know, but they shouldn't be. God is good. So two things. You need to do your individual prayer. It's important. For Midwest Believers Church to go where it needs to be, prayer is a key. That's up to us. It's up to us. And then corporate prayer. So this is the corporate prayer. I'm excited about this. I really am. This is something that is just so timely. It's timely for the church. It's timely for our pastors. It's timely for us. And I really believe this is something that God wants us to do. And when you do it, there is going to be a change. That, you know, Pastor many times has been talking about miracles, miracles, miracles. This is how we get there. It's good. God's good. So at the end, see Tisha, or you can go out on the Welcome Center and get this. But I, I just know that this is something that it's it's. These are the last days, and prayer is going to get us through a lot of things. And I believe this is a step toward that. Chad, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you have anything by chance? I know it. <laughs> You've been on my heart for some reason about this. Do you have anything you want to say on this, or you just want to close them? Whatever you want to do. I'm going to pass it off to Brother Chad here. And he's my brother-in-law, too, and I tell you what, he's been a great example of living a life for God. Praise God. You know, a lot of times things will never happen in your life when you don't pray those things out for your life. Remember, God's limited through your prayer life. 
lot of times people say they never experienced the realities of God is because they never gave God a chance to experience those realities with them. You know, God has a lot of things in store, but it's us. It's up to us to partner up with him and to see those things happen. Amen. Let's pray in closing. And then again, we have um, altar care workers up here. If you got any need in your life, God's here to meet those needs. Amen. I don't care if it's a earache to a toe ache to a headache to whatever it is. God wants to deliver you, take care of you and set you free. If you need prayer about anything, you got things going on in your life. Um, you just maybe committed your life back to Christ or committed your life to Christ. Come up here, share that with somebody. That's the next step, amen? Get up here. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues, get up here. They'll pray with you. We're here to agree with you. God's got great things in store for you. It's exciting. We're living an exciting time. Don't, don't ever say, I wish I lived 50 years ago or 100 years ago. It was better than no. God's called you. This is the time. This is the place. Somebody needs you. I love what Pastor Trent said today. He said, your testimony is so important. You know what a testimony is? It's proclaiming what God has done and proclaiming so he'll do it again. Yeah. That's what a testimony is. Proclaim what God has done so you'll see it again in somebody else's life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. We thank you for the word brought forth today. It will not return void, but we will be doers of your word and not hearers only. Father, I lift up every person out here, every family out here, everything going on in their life, Lord, and we know you are the need meter, Lord. You said you will watch over your word to perform it in our lives, so we lift up every individual. And Lord, as we leave today, may we see people how you see people. May we talk to people how you would want us to talk to people. And Lord, may people people see the fruit of the Spirit in our life because you said that people will know we are Christians by the fruit. And the fruit's not only for us to show off, but it's for us to be able to depart or impart onto other people so that our lives may be changed for your glory. We love you and we praise you. And Father, we thank you that this is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.